Welcome back to Mealy Weapons. I'm Ethan and in this video we're making batarangs. You can of course design your own batarang but for me it was just really easy to print this off of the internet and I'm gonna trace this onto my steel. There's obviously more complex designs than this but I'm going with this because not only is it probably gonna be the easiest but I think it looks the coolest. To make this battering, I'm going to be using 3 16 scrap steel. Now typically with any type of shuriken or throwing stars, the steel is usually about an eighth of an inch thick, but one thing that I've learned about those things is that if they're really light, they're not going to do any damage at all. Something like this is really going to be more effective. Now if you're going to cut your steel out of a saw blade like I have seen in most videos on YouTube, some of this video you will be able to skip mainly the heat treating because saw blades are made of hardened steel there's no need but for me I'm starting with raw materials so at one point in the video I will have to heat treat this but let me add this if you are going to make yours out of a saw blade you need to be very careful not to burn it because if you burn it you just ruin the heat treat in that area of the shuriken so without further ado let's get started so we have the design traced out into the steel. It's pretty rough, but the beauty of this is that the template doesn't determine the ending profile. I do. So what that means is that I'm going to follow the lines for the rough profiling, but then I'm going to use my eyes to determine the ending shape. Now i got to hit these lines with the grinder. Now that it looks like this, I'm going to put a flat disc on my angle grinder and clean up the edges. So now this is what we got. One thing that you'll notice is that the tips here are slightly burnt. If you're starting with just regular steel like this, that doesn't really matter. But if you're cutting your steel from a saw blade, that does matter a lot because you just ruined the heat treat there and this is one of the main points of contact. So just be really, really careful whenever you're grinding because just for a second, you can ruin the hardness which will lessen the effect as a shuriken. But now we're going to cut out some of the more difficult radius. To do this I'm just going to drill some quarter inch holes maybe 5 16 at the part that would be basically impossible to get with the Dremel tool and then I'm going to clean it up with my Dremel tool and some files. This is what I meant by drilling the holes. But now I'm going to throw a cutting wheel onto my Dremel tool and take out all of these notches. Then I'm going to go at it with my half round file to clean it up. Now this thing's really starting to look like a battering. This would be an appropriate time to bevel the edges. That means putting a slant in the metal to make it go to a sharp point. I'm only going to be beveling the straight edge and this curved edge right here. I'll be using my belt sander to do most of the grinding on this knife. To get the bevels on the straight edge, what I have here is a jig, it's just a piece of wood with a bolt through it, and I'm going to use this to get my angle started. Then once the angle is established, I'm going to freehand it until it reaches the center line on the edge. To do the curved edge, I'm going to use the wheel on the top to gradually get it down to the center line. To mark off the center edge, you just get a drill bit the same thickness as your steel and a red sharpie. What you're going to do with this is you're going to completely color the edge red. Once you have your edges colored, you're going to take your steel, lay it on a flat surface, use your drill bit, and you're going to scratch a line all the way down your edge. What the red sharpie does is it helps you see this line and then you'll just do that on the other side now and then what you're left with is a perfectly centered line this will help you with the grinding Beveling this thing for the most part is smooth sailing because there's not much grinding that you have to do before you meet the center line. But this looks great. 
Now would be an appropriate time to heat treat this thing. Make sure that you get out any little tiny burns before you actually do that. And if you have a saw blade, you can go ahead and skip this part. But here's something interesting that I noticed about it. I have not heat treated this thing yet, but I did throw it at one of my dartboards. The dartboard has metal reinforcements in it, and this end actually hit one of those metal reinforcements, and it put a notch in the steel. This kind of thing wouldn't happen if the blade was heat treated. The great thing about this is that I don't have to heat treat the entire thing. I'm only going to be hardening the main contact points on either end. So my forge is heating up right now. Typically when I use this thing, I use acetylene, but I'm going to have to make do with map gas because I just ran out. Um, so I'm going to heat up a piece of steel, just scrap steel, and then dunk it in my quench, quench oil. And that's going to preheat the oil, which you will need to do. And what I'm going to need to do is just um, heat up either ends until it's hot and it's not magnetic, and then dunk it in. Do the same thing for both sides because those are both the uh, main points of contact on this thing. And then, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm checking the magnetism right now, and right now it's no longer magnetic, so I'm going to leave this in there for about another minute, and then I'm going to quench it. So now one end is hardened, I'm going to go ahead and do the other end. This is about two minutes after I've turned the gas off. As you can see, the forge has cooled down a fair bit. If I was using acetylene, this forge would still be glowing. But now this thing is hardened. Those colors in the middle actually look pretty cool. But we can't just leave it like this, because if we missed and maybe hit some concrete or something, um, it would probably shatter because the steel is really hard. So to temper it, I'm just going to set my oven to about 400, maybe 350, and I'm gonna leave this thing in there for about two hours. I sanded off the scale left by the hardening so that I'll actually be able to see the colors from the tempering. Don't go crazy with your sanding right here because you'll still have to do more sanding after that, but this is just so that I can see the actual silver and I'll be able to see the colors from the temper. The color that I'm going for is kind of a uh, straw wheat color. But yeah, time to do the tempering. So now this thing is heat treated and what I'm going to do now is run it through my belt sander. Now we're going to paint it. I put this thing into a block of wood and I'm just going to put it in the middle of this box and hit it with my black spray paint. Now let this guy dry for about an hour. After the paint job we're left with this, what we're going to do next is take either some sandpaper or a sanding sponge and we're going to sand off the bevels to expose the silver. And with that done, the whole entire project is done. You don't even need to sharpen this thing because it's a throwing weapon. So that's how you make a Batman style shuriken. Just by lightly poking yourself with this thing, you can tell that if you were actually hit with this at high speeds through the air, oh god, that would do some damage. But you can look forward to my next video where I do... something. I don't really know. But something interesting that I've been doing lately was actually working with micarta. If you don't know, micarta is a fiberglass material made with some sort of fabric and fiberglass resin. And right now I'm making a knife with it. As you can see, I have my knife right now. It's taped up, and uh, the micarta is held on by some nails. I'm doing some work on it. This is going to be a lot stronger than wood would be, and um, it's just going to look really good because it has a cool uh, dark blue and black contrast. So I might do a review on this sometime in the future. But if you found this video entertaining or helpful, do drop a like. And if you want to take it one step further, share and subscribe to my channel. But I'm Ethan from Mealy Weapons. As always, stay sharp.